Good morning. It is now, what's happening with my hair? It is now four days later and I am heading to another doctor's appointment. Um, so <laughs> I've been home since uh, Wednesday morning and my last appointment was Thursday. I had one on Friday, busy day Saturday, and then Harriet was here yesterday. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get more sleep. I'm gonna, you know, sort my house out. No, I've just been editing videos. <laughs> Uh, this time it's my mammogram uh, MRI, so um, because I have much up here. <laughs> they couldn't really see anything on my mammogram in January. I have a dense, dense, uh, dense breast tissue. I'm like, no, there's just nothing there. I mean, when I was, you know, pregnant, obviously they were like, freaking like 38 double Ds. And then I breastfed my daughter for like five years and pumped to feed like 15 other kids. So there's all these kids with my accent running around. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just, you know, I, I didn't read the baby books. I didn't know you could just go to the supermarket and just buy food for your baby. I was like, oh, National Geographic, you know, I will just feed her with my, you know, with my mother nature. Anyway, actually, um, n not that this is a breastfeeding channel, but um, actually nursing her was fine. I really enjoyed, you know, I'm, I'm not like a squishy baby person. like. I love my kid, don't necessarily love like everybody else's all the time. Um, but I actually enjoyed like the baby times. Like I, I she was really, really, really easy kid. Um, she was, you know, never, um, never fussy. You know, if she cried, I just gave her a boob, you know. So she was really, yeah, it was really, really great. Um, uh, you know, I enjoyed it, but I don't miss it. So I think, you know, the one and done parents like myself, um, can understand like we enjoyed it but we don't really miss it like when I see a baby I don't be like my ovaries hurt like no I'm good I'm like I'm good back to being like good auntie friend and you know just have my one kid so enough about my boobs <laughs> just kidding yeah actually so I'm 44 and my sister had breast cancer at my age now 12 years ago so she's 12 years older and um, so I couldn't start having uh, mammograms um, at 34 you're supposed to start 10 years what's some it's a lot of math but it's like 10 years before the onset of breast cancer in a female immediate relative or something like that so my sister and my aunt both had breast cancer um, and so I was supposed to start having mammograms consistently every year at age 34 but at age 34 I was pushing a watermelon out of a garden hose <laughs> and having a baby and then I breastfed for five years so I didn't get my first mammogram until I was almost 40 years old and so um and then you know the, the old wives tales and you know basically like oh if you breastfeed it's lower risk of cancer that's all bullshit like you never know like breast cancer is one of those cancers that it can basically now happen to anybody <laughs> with no explanation so I, um, this is the worst, by the way, I'm by the Galleria, which is like literally the worst traffic. And I just I do not understand how people cannot consistently, like they need to put some barriers up because there's like 17 bottlenecks that go into one lane. And the Galleria is that way. The Katy Freeway is north, which is where I need to go. I'm trying to get in the far lane because these two lanes, and I'm going from my boobs to traffic in Houston. That's how terrible it is. Anyway, so half the cars, including myself, are straddling two lanes right now because this is terrible planning. Unless they're rebuilding the freeway over here. So it's just really, really terrible. And then this lane over here is where I need to go. And it's completely empty because everybody's trying to go left. Anyway, there's brake lights everywhere. So, uh, yeah, so anyway, so I have to, um, I have to go get my, um, an MRI on my, my, um, a follow-up to my mammogram. Um, so the VA hospital is really good. They're really good, um, women's clinic, a really good mammo mammography, <laughs> uh, department. And I've been able to get, um, mammograms every year now. So yeah, just, you know, protect your tatas. Um, modern science is great when you get sick it can help but you need to also do screenings so my dad also died of colon cancer so I had a colonoscopy back in um, back in November um, and that was not fun <laughs> no actually it was like a churn and burn place it was just like 20 like of these waiting room beds and it was just like 
just non-stop cameras up the butt <laughs> it's like that's all this doctor does all day is take cameras up butts um but you know they found like um i think they found two polyps they removed and you know that's the one you got to check that's the one that like people don't do screenings and even if you eat like super healthy food and all this stuff it doesn't matter you can't you know you're predispositioned um 50 percent literally of like your life is like your genetic disposition right so you can only control so much of it and because of that um you know you just have to i'm just gonna go over here it's a nightmare i'm glad i don't commute anywhere <laughs> it's like my commute is to go to hiking trails i'm glad i don't have to go to an office in the morning um but yeah so i'm sorry i'm going off on tangents i just woke up and i'm tired and i would like to go back to bed um but anyway so the mri shouldn't take very long probably about 30 minutes and then i'm gonna go home and go back to bed <laughs> and then i have to go at noon to um get my roots done because this this mess up here this hot mess see there's even the police are like you should be arrested for how bad your hair looks right now <laughs> so yeah so this is like my speed it's like speed dating when i'm home i'm just like boom appointments boom oil change boom hair done so that's what i have to do today and i'm only going like five miles and it's going to take me like 30 minutes because apparently the part of Houston I live in is just like Los Angeles. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so that's just kind of what I'm doing today. Just kind of going to my appointment and then that's it. I'm done with uh, being home for five days. I'm going to travel for two weeks, bring the van back to Texas. I've got an epic trip. Oh, it's going to be cowboys, wild west, uh, hiking, uh, meteors. I mean, it's going to be amazing. I've got, I literally spent 20 minutes planning this next trip and I'm super excited. I'm going to knock out about six uh, state parks to try to get through all 89 in Texas. Um, so yeah, and then after that, I've got the big epic uh, summer excursion. So those videos will be exciting. I'm going to head north. I'm going to knock out all of the northern states and end up in the Pacific Northwest, get as many national parks out that I can and just hug a tree. <laughs> it's going to be great. And then just fly back to Houston, you know, as I need to every other week. So yeah, so that's kind of my van life for, you know, most of the year now. Um, and then just, you know, working on all my personal stuff and um, going down, you know, to San Diego as, as, as needed. So things are stable there. Um, I'm not needed there right now. Um, so I've got to, you know, obviously take care of my own stuff for a bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was touch and go at the beginning for the first three months, but now things are stable. We're just kind of waiting, you know, for things to heal. Uh, not a lot that, you know, a lot of people can really do outside of the medical professionals. So, um, but anyway, that said, yeah, I'm just excited to get back on the road. And when the van is home, I'm going to be home for about three weeks. Um, after this last trip, I'll be home for three weeks. Um, but I will be traveling during the week um, to get a few more state parks done. And then uh, I'm going to try to do all the Dallas state parks and the Corpus Christi state parks. Um, while I'm home, that way when I do this big northern trip, I can just literally head straight up to Nebraska. I'm gonna start the trip in Nebraska. I've already been to Kansas and Oklahoma, and obviously Texas, so I'm just gonna go head straight up to, um, to Nebraska and just start there, and then head up into the Dakotas, over into Montana, Wyoming. Um, I'm gonna actually be skipping Idaho, kind of swinging back around and doing that on the way back, uh, but going to, uh, Washington State, uh, Oregon, Northern, and then popping into Northern California. It's the only way to get to Northern California is to go through nine other states because it's cheaper for gas. Uh, go to the three national parks there and then head into um, Idaho. So I've gotten a few recommendations for some things that are in like the Montana, Idaho corner. And then from there, I think I go back into Northern Nevada, uh, finally go to the Great Basin National Park and then probably head back um, into Utah. It's gonna be summer by the time, like super hot in summer by the time I get there. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to probably spend a couple weeks in northern Mexico um, where it is actually, it's hot but it's, you know, cool enough at night that I'm not gonna die. Um, so yeah, and I don't have my mountain bike with me. So then I think I'm probably going to maybe head back into Texas for the end of the summer. Um, probably work on the van a little bit and then figure out what my full 
plan is I would like to go to the, you know, start on the East Coast. That would be the last place that I need to go. But I also have the Florida trip, but I'm not going to go to Florida until the winter. Um, because right now, even now, it's too hot and humid. So Florida will be probably in November, December, January time. Um, and then I want to get all these states done so then I can just focus on just playing and just doing snowboarding season, which I've missed for the last couple of years. Um, yeah, so it's, it's going to be a fun, this is going to be a fun year. It's going to be a fun rest of the year, just kind of, you know, knocking everything out, getting, getting my goals done, getting the national parks done. And then after that, I can just roam free and play and, and just, you know, hone my hobbies. So that's kind of the idea. All right. Well, thank you for joining me on this 10 minutes to get out of my neighborhood. <laughs> I like the sunrise. Yay. Anyway, so Houston's a really easy city. It's not it's not a hard city to live in. It's very cheap. Everything I have is here. It's just so damn far to drive. I mean, it was a good idea to move here when Harriet's dad and I could just fly everywhere for free because, you know, his parents worked for United um, and we had, you know, privileges. But now, like since the pandemic, when I had to start driving everywhere, I was like, well, shit, it's a thousand miles to get out of Texas. I'm still in Texas. <laughs> So actually, that's why I started doing the national, so the state park um, goal, because it was a way to break up the trips out of Texas. And we have 89 state parks. We lost a state park and gained a state park. So um, yeah, I think I'm at like 76, but I have 100 on the list that I've been checking off um, because there's other stuff. So things like the Weiler uh, Tramway in El Paso has been closed, so I can just cross that one off. Um, and there's a few like natural areas like uh, Devil's Bridge and um, you know some other things that are not like state parks, but they are natural areas So that's on, on the list that I found somewhere on Wikipedia. So I just you know, I count those two So I'm actually doing you know 99 <laughs> instead of 89. It's all good. Where's the Prudence? Triple seal insulation. Well, she has wool insulation. The inside of Prudence looks like the outside of a sheep <laughs> so, um, Okay, so I am um, so tired I did not, I have not caught up on sleep since I've been home. I did sleep at 2 p.m. on Wednesday when I got home and woke up at 9 a.m. the next morning. And then I think I overslept because then I went to bed at midnight and woke up at five. And then went to midnight, woke up at five. And then last night went to midnight, finishing videos. And then woke up at 5.45 this morning <laughs> to check into my flight. And then went back to bed until 6.30. And now I have to be at the mammogram place by 7.15. So I'll get there about 7.10. I'm a morning person. When I do van life, I do van life. When I do van life, I get up at 4.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock, move my van to somewhere more public, like a Starbucks parking lot. Um, so I'm up at like 5 a.m., but I'm usually in bed by like 8 or 9. So, yeah, I'm like an old lady. Oh, I have to get off here. But this is good. Everything is like super close to my house. Um, yeah, and then I have to go out to Katie to get my hair done. I'm gonna go check on my storage unit because that's where my van is supposed to live. <laughs> um, probably clean, uh, sweep up my storage unit, and then um, yeah, and then just head back and just start sorting the house out, getting it, you know, cleaned and everything, so that you know if something happens to me while I'm gone and like the news crew has to come in, they're not gonna find my dirty underwear, like in the you know, <laughs> just sprayed everywhere. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna go just sort the house out, prep it for my being gone. Um, pack my laptop bag, which is all I take on the airplane. It's nice having two homes now because I don't have to pack a suitcase. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of rest up. I gotta go to bed super early tonight. Get up at 1 a.m., get to the airport by, no, get up at two, get to the airport by three, get on the plane at five, get into LA at 7.30, California time, go get the van, hug the van, and then uh, probably head to uh, Santa Monica. And I think I'm just gonna spend all of tomorrow, the rest of the day in Santa Monica, I'm gonna go rollerblading and then just chill on the beach. I don't have to do anything except go to Ventura in the evening um, and just park up for the night. So it's gonna be a, a chill day tomorrow. I don't really have anything else to do. I've got a full tank of gas there. Um, I do probably need to get some groceries, but yeah, just gonna go to Channel Islands National Park Wednesday and then I am I am on my big epic Wild West trip. I love, love, love the Wild West stuff in America. I picked a college in Indiana solely because I thought, well, this is a little house on the prairie. 
and that was one of the shows we had in England when I was a kid in the 80s. I grew up in, in, okay, just to preface, I was born in London. My parents were from New Jersey. My dad was working in the oil industry. So he got a job in London uh, in like 74, 75. And my brother was born there and I was born there. Um, not too far from Abbey Road. Thanks, slam your brakes on. Uh, not too far from Abbey Road. Um, and then I uh, moved to America when I was 13 in 1991. So, um, I'm a, I've been in America my whole life, um, but I've got this horrible, bizarre accent that won't go away. I used to say, actually, I used to sound more like Jason Statham. I'd say like water and butter and I think, right? So I used to have a real, real thick Cockney accent, you know? <laughs> Not so much now. Now I just sound like pretentious. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so I, I went to high school in Southern California. And when I was applying to college, I had no money because college was free in England back when I was there. So we didn't prepare. <laughs> and when I went to, um, uh, when I was picking a college, I found this stinky little college with 900 students in Indiana, near Indianapolis. And I thought it was like Little House on the Prairie. And I was like, that is the college I want to go to. I want to go to college in a cornfield. And I did, and I loved it. And I graduated with, um, you know, honors and a journalism degree and got a job in Japan through my college. And the rest is history. And it's just me and Bucky traveling now. It's little Bucky. Again, if you know, you know, you cannot come to Texas and not go to Bucky's. Anyway, <laughs> it's like an institution. All right, so I'm here, I think, at the imaging place. Yes, I think it's over there. These always look like totally sketch. I'm like, I don't know if I need a tetanus shot before I go in this medical building. I'm just kidding. Actually, most of most of Houston, it's all oil, gas, and healthcare, pretty much. Really good healthcare here. So, um, really happy with like the VA and stuff. So I'm fortunate. But okay, well, I have a busy day today. So stop just keeping me from my appointment, people. Go. Go. I'm <laughs> just kidding. All right, I'll turn off the camera first. Good morning from Messy Hair Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even shower this morning. I had to go to the VA hospital again. It is bright. Why is it so bright? Oh my God. Okay, so I have to go back to the VA hospital. I have a big long list of things I have to do, um, including EKG, blood work, labs. Um, I don't know what else, some other stuff because I have to have hand surgery. So I was, uh, I was assaulted <laughs> in 2019. It's not, you know, it, it was really bad actually. And the physical therapy and other stuff has not helped my wrist and my shoulder. So the shoulder is getting better. It's manageable if I get my um, acupuncture and chiropractic, but I have to keep getting that. So it's not like that doesn't cure it. Um, the wrist is unfortunately almost a total loss. So I need to get surgery because I'm unable to move it um, properly. And it's really super painful, especially at night because of my neck disability. I have to kind of wedge my hand under there when I sleep. And um, because of that, I have to, uh, I wake up in the morning and my, my hand, my wrist is killing me. And then it takes a while to, you know, get better during the day. Obviously it just, it just hurts all the time. And I don't want to be overly medicated or medicated or I don't take any medications. I don't do any drugs or anything. Um, so I just, you know, I don't want to be popping pills every day to manage pain when I could just, you know, get the surgery. So it's been three and a half years and finally they were like, yeah, we'll, we'll do the surgery for you. Um, that's fine. So yeah, so I'm going to do that, um, on the, on May 8th. Um, so hopefully that'll go well. I will have to be put completely under. <laughs> and the last time I got put under, they put a camera at my butt because <laughs> I had a colonoscopy, um, which, you know, check your colon. Uh, my dad died of colon cancer. So I had to uh, start getting colon colonoscopies at 44. And my sister and my aunt had breast cancer. So um, I've got a mammogram coming up. Actually, it's my third uh, this year. Uh, they want to check. They're, they're, I think they're just trying to look for my boobs. So I don't have any. <laughs> so they're just like, we don't know if you actually have any breasts because you got like tiny boobs. <laughs> so, well, because I, I work out and I run and I'm active all the time. So um, that's why low, low, uh, low BMI is what I have. So, um, which is body mass index. Um, but anyway, uh, enough about that. Um, so yeah, so I just, I got a lot of appointments that I'm just trying to get done since I've been gone in San Diego and California and traveling back for the last few months. So 
catching up on stuff, but the, the care is really, really good at the VA here in Houston, so super happy. But yeah, so I just woke up, it's eight o'clock, <laughs> slept in, didn't work out this morning. I had a busy week, I did bike rides and um, ice skating and running at the gym, so I'm gonna rest my body because I've got a whole week of hiking and biking coming up uh, this week. So I gotta pack the van tonight got the van fixed the rain's been terrible so I'm kind of set back on getting my um, getting my van packed but I did organize everything I just have to put everything in the van uh, this afternoon and then also set up for Harriet's multicultural festival which is going to be tomorrow so that'll be super fun um, so yeah busy week and then traveling for a week and then home for a week for more medical stuff and then I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm going to do that big trip north um, pretty epic but it would have me gone for quite you know quite a couple weeks or you know at least maybe three four months and then just flying back to Houston um, you know to see Harriet and do medical stuff if needed so I got to see how this stuff goes and how the hand surgery goes which is on Tuesday uh, not next week but the next week after that on Tuesday and I don't know how much they'll put me out of commission I know they're doing an incision Hopefully they'll give me the uh, stitches that just dissolve so I don't have to go back and get those taken out. Um, but yeah, so I don't know how that's going to affect my ability to do mountain biking and stuff. Because I was without my mountain bike for, you know, um, uh, for three months. And I just did hiking and running. Um, but, I, you know, if I can't do mountain biking, then I'll, I'll delay the trip. I'll just finish off the, the... I'll just stay in Texas and do stuff here or stay home and go ice skating. Um, but I, I don't know, like, I don't know if I should leave for this big national park trip if I can't ride my mountain bike, because that's, you know, a big part of it. hospital <laughs> this is hospital week so I have my pre-op for my hand surgery um, so I don't know I probably mentioned what happened uh, anyway so it's really bad it's been three and a half years and I still don't have any relief and my hand still hurts and my shoulder still hurts so the chiropractic is helping the shoulder but I do have to have a surgery for them to go in and fix the tendons and everything in my wrist um, so I was brutally assaulted <laughs> I was swatted actually um, and uh, it was just horrible um, but anyway enough of that uh, healing only on this channel so I am uh, going to get the pre-op so I already talked to the anesthesiologist I met with the anesthesiologist now I have the pre-op for the surgery and then they'll tell me later today what time the surgery is tomorrow hopefully super early because I can't eat anything after midnight and I don't do well let me get some blue sky there we go Oh, gray sky. Um, I don't do very well when uh, when it's uh, when I don't eat <laughs> when I'm hungry. So anyway, so I'm gonna go to the VA right now, and then also I uh, need to get a COVID test uh, prior, like within 24 hours of the surgery. So they're gonna stick something up my nose. <laughs> I've never had COVID, so um, I've been, I've you know, knock on wood, I've lucked out. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna do that, and then I have chiropractic this afternoon. Um, so hopefully I can do two appointments this week for that. Uh, that just basically they stretch me out. I'm still not getting taller, <laughs> although I'm five eight, so I'm already pretty uh, above average, which is good. Um, but I do wear heels, so I'm about almost six foot in my heels. So I like just tearing over people. When I lived in Japan for four years, I literally felt like I was like the tallest person in the room. <laughs> so anyway, um, that place was amazing. So yeah, so I'm gonna just get on the freeway. Uh, it's nine o'clock right now. Uh, my appointment's at eleven, so I'll go uh, just kind of take care of that. And uh, yeah, it was pretty quick last time. I don't know what was going on. The VA was like on board with like getting me through and getting me checked in within like 20, in and out within 20 minutes, four different departments. I was like, what is happening the VA? Why are you so efficient? Uh, but they are great over here. The Houston VA is fantastic. And um, yeah, so very fortunate and thank you for the free healthcare. <laughs> Good morning, it's 4 a.m. Actually, it's 4.20 a.m. And somebody's getting towed. <laughs> yeah, it's like, please don't park in our apartment community and don't park in a space without a permit because this dude, he's going to tow your car. Bye-bye. Good night. <laughs> Actually, I've had to tow people a few times. And he, he literally, 
Oh my God, he's literally gonna destroy this car. <laughs> what is he doing? He hit the curb. Poor person that sits, like lives right here is gonna be like, what is this person doing? Yeah, I've seen him like destroy the bumpers of cars, but yeah, that car's getting towed. Goodbye. <laughs> anyway, it's 4 a.m. I'm waiting for my Uber. So here's me. I'm all sticky because I had to cover myself in this like antibacterial wipes, which Jeff Jeff had to use in the hospital. That's how they did like the baths. Cause he couldn't get out of bed, obviously, being an amputee and being in this situation. And he's like, they're so cold. And I never understood until last night and this morning when I had to use them as well. Um, so I have to check in at four. Was, I'll be there about 4.45. My surgery's at 5.30 a.m. Uh, so I'm just gonna get there early. I've got to drink the rest of this water and then I get to sleep for a few hours and then I get the, uh, I, I just do medical transport. So I get the transport company to take me home and I'm gonna sleep the rest of the day. So um, haven't eaten anything, can't uh, have any smoothies or anything for breakfast. It's humid, it's 70 degrees right now. It feels really nice, but I would rather go back to bed. So I will see you guys after my surgery. Fingers crossed it does well. It is 4.50 a.m. I am at the VA and I care. <laughs> Just kidding. Very strange being here when there's no one here. I've been here actually overnight sometimes at the ER, but I am now looking for the green elevators because so I have to go up to the fifth floor. Yeah, that's a blood lab. And these are specialty clinics. And the women's clinic is down the end here. And there is no one here. Usually this is filled with people, but it's very, very good here. It's a teaching hospital. So I have two surgeons and um, one is the surgeon and the other one's learning how to be a surgeon. That's the uh, downside to, well, it's not downside. I mean, you have to learn, but if you get the VA stuff, usually you've got like people watching. When I had my daughter, I had multiple midwives. <laughs> so they were all like poking and prodding me. These are the blue elevators. I need the green elevators. Um, I'll just go up here. This should be fine. I can walk around. It all connects anyway. So, okay. All right, see you soon. Okay, I'm home. I look like shit. <laughs> I've already thrown up once because of the uh, general anesthetic. So um, it is about 6.30 p.m. and I got home about 2. It took a while to do the surgery and that's my hand. <laughs> look at my ridiculous hand. Uh, it's like eight times, it's like bigger than my head. Look at that. It's like eight times bigger than my other hand. Um, so this is just the splint, um, but basically they, and I'm still kind of out of it. I was under general anesthetic and um, I joked with them. I'm like, yeah, like I came out of it and I was like, oh no, why do I have a British accent all of a sudden? You know, like people that come out of surgery and they, you know, can suddenly play the piano. Um, that'll never be me. So yeah, so finally done. I just feel horrible right now. Um, I've just been like laying here on the couch at my house which is basically a glorified storage unit at this point. Um, yeah, so it's hurting a lot and I took um, pain meds, but then I threw up. So maybe I'll just take some Tylenol instead. The Travadol is what they gave me, but I don't, I'm not a pill person. So it didn't sit well with me very well. Uh, anyway, I tried to eat a banana and threw that back up. So um, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do for food because I haven't actually eaten anything all day. Uh, and my throat is all globby because I had to put the, like, intubate me um, for the um, for the general anesthetic. So my throat is hurting, which isn't good. But I should be fine tomorrow. Tomorrow I've got uh, the mammograms. My third mammogram of the year, second um, ultrasound, and probably a biopsy. They just, they saw something on the right boob and they got to figure out what it is, but I think I'm fine. Um, I breastfed for like five years, so I think it's just all the 
times that I had mastitis. But um, anyway, yeah, so this is my current state for the next two weeks. <laughs> and then I have to fly on Thursday to my college for the uh, awards, awards dinner for the journalism school. So I have to rethink my wardrobe because the jacket that I was going to wear, like the little, um, you know, business casual, uh, I can't get my arm in the sleeve. So I'm going to have to wear something else. But I have plenty of dressy, you know, formal casual stuff. So, all right, well, I'm going to go back to bed. <laughs> so that was fun. Actually, everyone was really great. The nurses were great. I feel sick. And my throat is all dry and globby because it's just, I got the hiccups. It's like the after effects. I'm not very good with any kind of medication or any kind of hospital stuff because I never go, except when I break an arm <laughs> ice skating or something. Um, but yeah, so I guess I won't be doing my um, Southern, uh, the last six states, uh, so I can't even talk, the last six state parks for um, the 89 for Texas. I was going to go down to South Padre Island, but I don't think that's going to happen. I'll see how I feel on Saturday. Um, and then uh, Harriet's here Sunday, and then I would leave afterwards on Sunday night for like four days. Um, she has a field trip next week, so I might just rest up and just stay at home for, you know, the next two weeks. Anyway, okay, so yeah, they'll take the, they put stitches in and everything, and um, they really had to like, it took an hour and a half for them to go in there and do the surgery. They really had to go in and dig in there and fix all the tendons and everything. Um, and take out some like infections and stuff and other nasty shit. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna go back to bed. I look ugly. <laughs> there we go, hang on. I can't see you now. Oh my God, okay, I'm gonna put my nerdy glasses back on. All right, I'm gonna go try to make some food. I need to eat something, but yogurt didn't stay down, nothing stayed down. So I don't know what I'm gonna do for food. Maybe get some orange juice. I don't know. I can't drive, so I'll have to do Instacart and just have them ah, kick my uh, kick my groceries around the front porch. So, all right, I'm gonna go back to bed. Good morning from the apocalypse. <laughs> it is a shitty rainstorm right now, and you know us Houstonians, we Houstonians are used to it. So I am now going to another appointment, um, continuing medical week. Uh, I have um, a, a third mammogram and second, third mammogram this year, second uh, MRI and possibly first biopsy. So my sister had breast cancer when she was my age, 12 years ago. So when she was 44, I don't think I have breast cancer. They found some like dense breast tissue. I'm like, I'm surprised you even found my boobs. I don't have any. <laughs> like, uh, anyway, enough of that. Uh, when I was pregnant though, I had like 38 double Ds, which were like phenomenal. I was like, what am I gonna do with these things? Uh, but anyway, so I think I have to go in here. Medical, yeah, Houston Medical Imaging. So uh, this is just a follow up, uh, just to double check. Um, I think I'm okay. I don't know. This is visitor parking. Uh, but yeah, really, really bad rainstorm. Um, I've got my hand covered in a plastic bag because yesterday I had surgery. So I'm not falling apart. I'm just on the mend. <laughs> but we'll see. Oh, hang on a minute. Let me back up. Hang on. Okay, sorry for the like low lighting. That's not much better. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so I've got my hand in a plastic bag. Um, because I had surgery yesterday and I was so out of it after the uh, after being under put, totally under put to sleep I can't even speak now there <laughs> um, I feel fine they gave me tramadol which made me throw up and then they gave me um, Tylenol which didn't make me throw up so I took two I, I never take any pills I'm not a pill person uh, but I took two Tylenol last night and I slept like a rock slept on the couch um, because it's easier to elevate my hand on the back of the couch um, and then uh, woke up on the couch this morning slept really well got up about 6 a.m. took me a while to get a shower because they gave me this big old like rubber thing to put out like this humongous rubber tarp to put like my hand through to like protect it so I managed to actually like shower and do my hair with one hand now thankfully I have a resume for this shit because I have broken my arm three times on this side hurt my hand one time on this side 
so I have, uh, and then I have surgery. So I ha have a resume for using one hand to like do my hair and shower and all this stuff. Um, although I had trouble making a smoothie this morning because I couldn't, I could screw it on, but I couldn't screw it off. So I had to use my inner thighs and like a little bit of leverage to try to undo it. Cause I don't have an opposable thumb right now. It's kind of, my thumb's kind of hidden away. And so I can't use like two fingers to like, anyway, it's, it's just, it's bad. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to go in here and get my mammograms done. Um, probably be here a couple hours and then I have one more appointment this afternoon and then I'm just going to relax and then I fly out to my college tomorrow, which will be a different video. Um, so that'll be fun. <laughs> it's showing up with, you know, injured arm, um, but it'll be nice. I, I, I definitely need to go out to this um, awards dinner because my favorite professor uh, is going to be there. My other favorite professor is going to be there. That was lightning. Um, and my other favorite professor passed away, sadly, from cancer last year. So this is kind of like I need to go. And I haven't been back properly in 13 years. 14? No, 13 years. And I haven't, uh, I haven't actually been to that college. Like, I graduated 23 years ago. So, um, okay, it's really dark and foreboding outside. But I'm going to go in here, get my mammogram, and I will see you um, when I see you. <laughs> so... I don't know, it's just a video of all my medical stuff, but I'm fine, I'm on the mend, and thankfully I have fantastic medical care. It's just raining, and of course now I hate the rain because I've got this, you know, tarp on my hand. <laughs> so, um, anyway. Okay, I will, um, I will see you later, so wish me luck. Happy Tuesday morning. <laughs> um, I look like crap because I can't do my hair because my arm is still in a cast. Uh, one more week and this thing is off. Um, so, I am headed to my third mammogram this year, plus a second ultrasound and, what's wrong with my hair, anyway, a second ultrasound and possibly first biopsy. Um, so they think they found something like in my like right boob. <laughs> I think they're just looking for my boobs, I don't have any boobs. <laughs> so not like when I was pregnant, when I had like 38 double Ds and I breastfed for five years. Um, but I did breastfeed for five years and I fed 15 other babies and all that stuff. So um, I have probably denser tissue. I don't know. I don't know what the whole science is behind it. Either way, um, I'm going back. I was supposed to do this last week, but they messed up the scheduling and they put me on Thursday when I was going to Indiana. So you can see the Indiana video um, previously <laughs> when I went back to my college. But I was like, I would never schedule it for Thursday. I'm flying. How could I do both? So uh, then they scheduled the ultrasound um, for like the 22nd and then the mammogram. I'm like, you're supposed to do both together. <laughs> so finally I talked to uh, like the supervisor person and she's like, yes, don't worry because it's from the VA. And I called the VA and the VA is like, well, um, we prefer you to go to this place outsourced because they have your previous medical imaging from April. And uh, they, although the VA did my mammogram in, in uh, January. So originally I was going to go to the VA on May 12th, but I was flying out and I wasn't going to be here. So they sent me to this outsourced place and then they messed up the scheduling. And I was like, that's why women die <laughs> because they don't get the, they don't get the checkups. And this isn't something you can just like push back. I mean, if they find something, they got to get right on top of it. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to go back this morning and get my, it's a mammogram and an ultrasound and they can do a biopsy. The other place I went to in April was just an um, um, MRI. And they had me like in a Superman pose, laying on my belly with my boobs just dangling. That was how they put me into the machine. It was kind of funny. Um, but you've got to, you know, check. I mean, if they say, we think we saw something, breast cancer and breast, you know, health is not something you can just like hide away and just wait and delay. I mean, I have friends that had breast cancer in their 20s and 30s and, and my sister had it at my age now. My aunt had it, um, which is a little bit older than I am now. And, uh, you know, you can't, you, you can drink all the kale smoothies you want, but genetics is genetics. So I am uh, part Ashkenazi, Jew, Hungarian, Lithuanian, Russian, Ukrainian, Polish. Like, yeah, like we are high risk because we are Eastern European. So. Um, so I'm right on it. I've always gotten my scans and checkups like, you know, and it's always been negative. One time, the year before I had Harriet, I had a scare of like, I don't know what it's called, endometriosis or something. Um, but it was like, they, and it wasn't, it was just, it was actually just gas. They thought I had all these like 
cancer assists on my ovaries and they're like no no you're just really gassy you just need to fart <laughs> so x-rays aren't always you know sometimes it's just like masses and it's like no you just ate a lot of beans today so then a year later I had Harriet so um, but still you've got to check and get multiple opinions and don't, don't just you know if the insurance company says no we're not going to cover your second opinion then say screw you insurance company and pay out of pocket who cares <laughs> like yeah it's going to be a little bit of money but you can't just you know be at the mercy of the insurance companies I think that's why we're such a, a unhealthy society is because insurance will tell you no you can't go get a pap smear or no you can't you know get your prenatal checkups that's some guy down there sorry some guy has his backpack on top of his car um, but yeah so you can't just you know let money dictate your health I mean that's why we're such an unhealthy country um, thankfully I have free medical care and they do outsource to community care for anything that the VA either cannot or feels they you know prefer to go to somebody outside so very fortunate in that but then you know being delayed a week and it's been five and a half months since my first mammogram this year so that's a long time I mean I had a friend in college who died um, years ago just really really great guy and he had a cancer on his back that went to stage four in two weeks and he went through chemo for three months he lost like 100 pounds he's a big guy you know just really really great nice super nice guy um, but then he posted on Facebook that he had, you know, so happy that he got through the cancer and that he lost the weight and all this stuff. And then I responded like two days later onto the post. I was traveling and then my friend uh, PM'd me and said that he had passed away like three days after he posted how great he was feeling. And, you know, it's just something as simple as like, you know, somebody in the hospital had the cold or, you know, you just you get an infection that has nothing to do with the cancer. And it was just, it was devastating. Um, lost a couple friends. Uh, there was a guy in college, there's a memorial scholarship uh, in his name. He had a Hodgkin's lymphoma, I think it was. And I remember he was there my freshman year and he passed away when I was, I think either a freshman or a sophomore. Um, but it was just like, you just see somebody and then the next, you know, the next minute they're, you know, they're not, they're not in good health. So cancer sucks. Okay, I'm at the mall. <laughs> I did some retail therapy to get Harriet some uh, things for summer. So I got her a Kirby backpack and a hat for her summer vacations. And um, I have to go back to the MRI place or the uh, mammogram place and get a biopsy at two. So they are concerned, but they don't know what it is. Um, so right now I'm gonna go back to the ice rink area to find my car. I saw some of my friends that I used to skate with. That was really nice. Um, the ice rink where I skate at the Galleria is actually being renovated right now. So uh, it's closed until the 12th of June. Um, but yeah, I might come skate here. Tomorrow is only from like 11 to one. So I don't have any time to skate tomorrow, um, but I may come back on Thursday and skate all day. I'm okay with my arm skating. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I just got a bunch of stuff, new shoes and everything. Um, I'm tired. I was going to go to the gym, which is why I've got my workout clothes, um, but I don't have any time. Once I do the biopsy, I've got to be home. I have a call with Harriet at five. And my hair <laughs> just didn't do anything today. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to go, going to go back in the car. It's already one and I've got to be back at the um, imaging center at 1.30. So yeah, figured I can get it all done today. Thankfully, the order for the biopsy was already in. So they just had to squeeze me in at two. So it's concerning now. <laughs> I hope there's nothing wrong, um, but if there is, I'll just say, just remove them. I don't need my boobs, <laughs> so just take them out. Cloudy morning, I'm heading to the gallery. I just went to the VA to drop off my like nine CDs of biopsies and MRIs and ultrasounds and mammograms um, so they don't have the results yet but I explained to them I actually went back and looked at my 2019 mammogram and the 2021 mammogram and of course like during 2020 I couldn't get anything so everything was closed for the pandemic but I looked at it and I was like wait a minute like the little dark spot that they identified as suspicious was there in 2019 exactly the same and I'm thinking I'm hoping fingers crossed I still have this thing on my arm fingers crossed that 
it's from when I had mastitis multiple times on the right boob and I had a cyst and like clocked, clogged, dug, clog, clogged ducks, um, like milk, milk ducks, like when I was breastfeeding. Um, so mastitis is just an infection of the uh, mammary glands. So when you breastfeed, or even if you don't breastfeed, when you're trying to reduce your milk supply, sometimes you can get an infection. You just have to take antibiotics for 10 days, which is what I did. Uh, but I had it multiple times and I had multiple issues all the way through like 2017. So my daughter was born in 2012. So toward the end of my breastfeeding time, um, from 2013 to 2018 is when I breastfed. And I still had issues in 20, um, I still had issues in 2017. Uh, like in January, I remember I had a big old problem there. So I'm hoping that's what it is. I really am. I don't, I don't need anything else right now. I'm anyway, so I'm just going to head to the gallery and get a haircut. Finally, I need to sort out this mess. It's just, it's having ponytails and wearing hats and hiking and being in like inclement weather. My hair has kind of gone to trash. So I'm going to get a haircut, probably cut off an inch or so, just get it layered a little bit. So it looks a little less disheveled when I would like to just not bother doing my hair in the morning. Of course, not having my left hand for two weeks, um, I've not really been able to do anything with my hair. And I figured, you know what, it's coming up to summer. It is summer <laughs> and I need to just get it cut a little bit. So I'm gonna go do that right now. I am back at the VA and uh, I need to get this taken off, but I have some good news. My uh, mammogram was benign. So that is fantastic. <laughs> Uh, still really distressing and worrying because like I said my sister had breast cancer at the same age I am now uh, I have Ashkenazi Jewish heritage and Hungarian and Eastern European and all those uh, you know fun fancy genetics that don't really help <laughs> so that said I am now going to get my cast off my arm and I'm so happy <laughs> I'm so happy this is coming off today hopefully it's coming off hopefully it's healed very well I have feeling feeling in it, which I didn't have any feeling before. Like it was literally pressing on all the nerves, and um, you know I had a hard time. I can feel my my thumb. I can't even talk this morning. I'm so happy, so relieved. Um, yes, I couldn't feel my thumb and all that stuff. So now, um, now I can feel stuff. So I've not been taking like Tylenol or anything. I just want to actually like be one with my body <laughs> so I want to be able to feel what's going on so I can gauge you know the healing uh, I'm also not a pill person I generally don't enjoy like not having control of my body <laughs> so beautiful day um, when I get home I do need to just start organizing and packing for this upcoming trip uh, but anyway so yeah so the uh, mammogram was benign the doctor called this morning and she said she called like eight o'clock and she said for me to go back in six months for MRI ultrasound and mammogram again um, but she couldn't schedule it out for September so she just called, told me to like call her um, when it's closer to that time so I marked it on my calendar um, and then hopefully my hand is okay so we're on the mend and then we're getting back to traveling that is great the rest of my year is going to go as planned um, but I will be making sure that I meet all my appointments and all that stuff so of course there's no parking <laughs> there's like a thousand solar panels on the roof here there's no parking. I'm going to go over to the um, women's center because I know I can park there. So that's good. Really relieved. So yes, get your tatas checked, please. Don't neglect your boobs. And guys, yes, we understand you want to help us check our boobs. <laughs> but really, you need to get a mammogram, women. Like, it's like, I get it. Like, the guys I know are like, I'll check. I'm like, I don't need you to, like, help me check. Get your hands off me. <laughs> so, um, but I do appreciate the support from the uh, from my guy friends. Um, but anyway, yes, go get your mammograms and uh, yeah, get it done. If you have like you know sp specific genetic disposition, it's very bright by the way. If you have a specific genetic dis disposition, please make sure that you get checked um, more often than. Uh, people that don't have genetic disposition. So meaning like Eastern European, Ashkenazi Jew, um, you can get genetic testing. I think it's only like $250 to get it done on your own, um, which is well worth it. I mean, you'll learn a lot, um, but it's also good for research because they probably wouldn't know what they're looking at if they weren't able to like take massive samples of other biopsies and things and compare it. So I'm all for science and learning and uh, yeah, just get your boobs checked. <laughs> so, so relieved. Okay, I'm at the BA now 
at the Women's Center. I'm gonna find parking. For some reason, there's no parking today. This is the amount of solar they have on top of those parking structures. That is insane. That is why I want my van. <laughs> so anyway, that's the Med Center. That's downtown Houston over there. And probably about 10 minutes from downtown, five minutes, maybe like two miles. Not very far. Anyway, okay. <laughs> All right, let's go to the hand clinic. So this is the aftermath of my hand. So they had to really dig in. It was all the way to the joints. So they, apparently they had to stretch open my entire hand. So it's actually kind of hard to move it right now. So. Yeah. Okay, so in conclusion for this video, <laughs> um, my cast is off and my hand still has all that like iodine stuff on it. A few bruises and uh, bruises. Sorry, I have boobs on my mind, it's that mammogram bruises and uh, a cool scar so it actually feels really like painful right now because I haven't moved it in two weeks so it's very very stiff so I just have to like move it around and like I don't know flip off other people while I'm driving you know all those hand gestures yeah so just got to work on the work on the dexterity um, but it's very glad that it's uh, over so now I'm gonna go put my sunglasses on because it's hot outside and we'll go get some food and water for my trip. And this means that I get to go on my trip and get to do everything that I want to do. Ow. Ow, my hand hurts. It's like when you, okay, it feels like right here on this muscle, which is all kind of like tingly right now, right where you catch a softball really hard or a baseball really hard, that's that pain it feels when you're like, ah, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> so, all right, I am done with this video and moving on to back to, uh, not liking so thank you for coming along on this medical journey and uh yeah good to know that i'm in the clear for my hand and in the clear for my boobs really really good news so really good day and just stay safe out there wear your helmets uh wear your padding and get your mammograms and get your prostate checked uh all that stuff <laughs> so um yes everything get it all checked because you never know and the scares do suck but the scars are pretty cool